Hi guys, welcome to the chat show here on Buzzing Pattaya and to this week's question and answers. Uh, it's been a fantastic week. Thank you very much for all of the questions and everything you sent in. And uh, what do you think of this? <laughs> what did you think? I've been playing around the other day on uh, the computer. And I see some of these channels and they've got like these little funky intros and I thought well let's have a crack at one of them which is what I've done so uh, I don't know, it doesn't make me any better I just thought it'd make me feel good uh, but anyway what did you think a little snippet I thought looks quite professional anyway all right so before we get into this week's Q&A session and before I answer all your questions I just want to say an incredible thank you to every single one of you that has helped support me with the uh, GoFundMe for the bank crew jar for the children uh, absolutely blown away. I'm sorry about Sunday if I was a little bit jaded at the end because truthfully I was a little bit emotional if I'm being honest. I had a bit of a tear in my eye when we'd finished that chat because the reality kind of like sunk in that we'd done it, you know, and never ever did I think we would do this. And I don't mind doing what we're going to do, like the skydive and whatever it is, but it was just, I don't know, it's just amazing. And I can't wait to get these kids out there and do stuff, you know. And don't worry, once we go out, I will start detailing what we spent, where we spent the money, so you get an up-to-date uh, know of, of what's going on and where it's all going, etc. But yeah, so, but the good news is, is that there's no more GoFundMe, right? So you don't need to send me any money for the kids. There's nothing else you're gonna make me do. It's been done now, we've put that one to bed. I will do the skydive, I will do the zip wire, and uh, we'll just have a great time now. So again, thank you so much for everything. All right, so questions. So Ho Kung Tong, sorry, Ho Kum Tong said to me, or said to me, sent in a question, should I say, what's the difference between a go-go bar and a gentleman's club? And I thought, do you know what? It's weird, isn't it? Because so many things you kind of like take for granted, especially if you've been here a few times, because you think, well, it's obvious. But it isn't, is it? It isn't. If you haven't been here before, maybe you think of a gentleman's club. And uh, we spoke about this on Sunday's live stream where people were saying, oh, well, I thought it was like a really seedy, dirty old man's club where you have a cigar and you sit down and like it's a smoke filled kind of room. <laughs> and it isn't. Yeah? It's anything but that. So. Basically, if you've not been here before, and what I want to do is, I want to ask you guys to help me as well in, in this one particular question. So, if you haven't been here before, there's mainly three types of bars that you're going to expect. The beer bars, you're going to expect the go-go bars, and the gentlemen's clubs. And a beer bar, if you remember, well, you haven't been here, so you can't remember, uh, but like beer bars are little open bars. They're normally small bars, they're open-fronted. Many of them are in the beer bar complexes, so like uh, Simon's Beer Complex in Walking Street. I mentioned that in uh, yesterday's walkabout when I was walking around. Um, also, you know, back in the day, Soy 7, Soy 8, there was a lot of open concrete bars. They're like little concrete rectangles, and the girls sit inside, you sit around the edge, and, and uh, you entertain each other and talk to each other. But they're very much a standoffish kind of bar. There's no, um, none of that kind of stuff going on for obvious reasons. You're in broad daylight. Um, so it's more a case of sitting down, picking up a beer. Beers in general in these kind of places are quite cheap. Um, the girls, there's the odd rose between the thorns. Um, I'll leave it at that. You know, it's, uh, it's kind of like a sliding scale. You know, you go from like the go-go bars into the sort of gentleman's club, then you go to beer bars and, and you're off kind of thing in terms of the girls, uh, what should we call them? Attract, not attractive, no, that's a horrible word to say. Everyone's attractive. Um, let's say in their more uh, first whole years, let's put it that way. Um, so a beer bar is really like a concrete block where you can sit down, get a beer, have a chat with the girls. It's good fun, they'll play that Connect Four. God damn, they're good at that. And jackpot, I like jackpot. I'm pretty decent at jackpot. Um, I say decent, it's all luck in it. But at the end of the day, I feel like I'm decent. It floats my boat. So they are what a beer bar is. Now, this is where I need you guys to help me. And a go-go bar. I will explain what an agogo bar is for those of you that are not sure. But what I would like to ask you guys watching is please, could you drop down a comment below? Where was your best ever go-go bar you went to? And it can be now closed, it can be still going. Obviously, I know we're closed right now, but you know what I'm saying, it can be still surviving. Where was your best go-go bar and why? Why, okay, so like, Maybe you might say Skyfall because the quality was exceptional there. Maybe it was Sapphire. You know, maybe it was Misty's because it was a very uh, interesting one. You know, there's lots of things going on in there. Maybe it's Kink when you go upstairs because there's lots of things going on in there. 
So I want you to drop your question. Now, to answer your question, uh, Ho, is basically an Agogo bar is behind closed doors. It's a bar when you go in, they're normally fairly spacious. There's quite often a, a, a stage in the center and maybe a couple of stages, a little small podiums on the sides. And the girls will dance on there. They'll wear a little badge with their number and uh, the Mama San and the drink service staff will come around and uh, make sure you're taken care of. In all honesty, you know, some of the go-go bars are very pushy, the service staff, I hate them. You know, they come up to me and they go like that and I'm saying, well, are you gonna pay? Well, if you're not gonna pay, jog on and leave me alone. You know, I've got, I've got hands, I've got a mouth, I can soon see you and talk to you when I need to get a drink, now jog on. So they can be quite intrusive, they can be quite forceful. And what happens is the girls dance on the stage, they'll do their little two-step shuffle, left to right, right to left, left to right, right to left. You might be lucky, you might get one or two that actually put a bit of a show on. Um, but in general, you know, they just sit there, they're, they're clicking their heels together and they're just hoping that, you know, somebody like yourself, if you walk in, will rescue them from the, from the stage and, and get them to sit down with you. However, one of the things to be aware of, and I think this is really naughty if I'm being honest, I don't like this bit. You buy the girl a drink, she comes to sit next to you, and two seconds later I have to go dance. Well, hang about, what's the point of me buying you a drink? The whole purpose of buying a drink is so you get off that stage and you come and sit with me and we can get to know each other. Not for me to buy you a drink, you come and sit with me for, for a nanosecond and say, oh sorry, I have to go back and, and go dance again. You know, that, that to me is naughty, I don't like that. And, and I tend to kick off with the Mama Sans. I'll say, no, 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 I've paid a, a drink so she can come and sit with me. And normally the Mama Sans are quite supportive if they will help you out. Or some of them will say, no, no, she have to dance, she have to dance. So just be aware of that. You know, when they, when they shuffle off the stage, the best thing to do is to wait until they, they change their shift. They normally change every sort of 10, 15 minutes, sometimes 20 minutes, the girls will get off and the next go, batch will go on. So just be aware that that can happen. The prices in the Agogo bars, you know, let's, let's not kid each other, they can be very expensive. There's no hiding that fact. So just be prepared to put your hand in your pocket because they will be a lot more expensive. And in fairness to the Agogo bars, you know, they've got bigger rents, they've got bigger premises, they've got security, they've got a big electric bill because they've got all the, the lights going on, the girls dancing, they've got to pay all the girls. I talked about the tag girls uh, in yesterday's video where the cost of that is just killing the clubs. Um, so they have to fund all these, and the only income they get is via these um, drinks that you buy and, and the bar fines. So it is going to be expensive in an go go bar. There are some very uh, interesting go go bars where you can go in there and you can get very, uh, very uh, well acquainted with your newfound friend. Um, so you know places like Kink. Um, I wouldn't call uh, the windmill go go bar. I mean, I suppose it is, but it isn't if that meant. Well, anyway, the windmill's a windmill. Um, Kink's pretty decent. You know, there's a few out, there's a few out there. Guys, drop your comments below. You know, this is the beauty of the channel. You guys can just go ding, 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 and there'll be some fantastic uh, recommendations. So please look through those uh, when you do read back this uh, question that you've sent in. A gentleman's club. These tend to be more out the way, and it's more of a go-to place rather than it's right in front of you. And for the simple fact being that it's all behind closed doors and it tends to be, certainly the ones that are further out of the city center, they tend to be where people like the expats that live here like to go and relax away from prying eyes. You know, they can't be seen walking out of a go-go bar if you live here, because obviously maybe the missus thinks you've gone down 7-Eleven to get a pint of milk and suddenly you're walking out of uh, Sapphire and they're thinking, well, that's not the milk we were talking about. So, you know, you've got to be uh, aware that these, these places exist predominantly, not all, but predominantly for the expat community. Having said that, they're great fun. You know, you can go to some places here like Blush and people like that, you know, Passion. They're, they're good places. There's a lot more going on. They're generally a lot bigger, uh, a lot more relaxed. There's no dancing on stages and stuff like that. Not very often. You know, they normally have a lot of themes, so the girl will Maybe it's a lingerie day, maybe it's an air hostess day, maybe it's a, a, a nurse's day, whatever. You know, they do try and uh, keep, keep it ent entertaining and uh, different. Most of these places will provide food. Uh, Price-wise, they're less than the go-go bars, but more than the beer bars. Um, but the girls in general, um, they're, they're, you don't find that many younger girls in the gentlemen's clubs 
but you certainly find the more experienced girls. And obviously, if they're experienced, I'll leave that to your imagination. But again, guys, you know, what are your go-to places? For me, it has to be blush. You know, Barry and Vic, absolutely blinding guys. Good set of girls. They've got 15, 20 girls in there. There's a good pool table upstairs. Um, it's laid back, it's nice, it's air conditioned, and lots of TVs. For me, that's, that's a go-to place. Um, so that's, that's the difference. So a beer bar is a little concrete block where the girls will sit inside, you sit outside and, and you communicate that way. Prices are, are quite cheap and there's no interaction. Um, if you go into the go-go bars, the prices are more expensive. There's a lot more girls and, and you know the girls are uh, pretty much very, very good quality and it's a lot more expensive but you can have a bit of fun and of course places like kink and that you know they're their kind of places um so you got that and then obviously you got the gentleman's club which is more refined in terms of like it's just chilled out it's nice it's easy and the girls certainly will entertain you so there you go my friend hopefully that's answered your question but as i say to everybody guys please drop your comments below where's your go-to beer bar where's your go-to a go-go where's your go-to gents club please share and uh hokum tong please have a read of these comments people that are kind enough to share have a look see where they suggest and uh there you go hopefully that's answered your question my friend all right now edward edward sent in a question about what is the best sim phone provider for people coming here on holiday Man, you've given me a tough one here. Um, you know, I don't. <laughs> I live here, so I have a, I have a, a Thai phone and a Thai SIM card. I believe, the, and again, please guys help me out a little bit, but I believe that if you go to the airport, uh, people like DTAC, True, uh, AIS have got booths in the airport that will set you up a prepaid SIM card. Now, if you've got a phone that's got a dual SIM, I believe they will put the SIM in for you, they will activate it, and you can get packages for like 500, 600 baht for 15 days internet access and stuff like that. My question though has to be this. When you come into the city center, it's pretty much a given that nine, I'd say, nine out of 10 places you go to will have Wi-Fi access, nine out of 10. So, I don't really, unless you're going to be making phone calls, I don't really get the, necessi the necessity to have a Thai SIM card unless you don't want it to be connected to your English number, which I understand, but then you'll use all the social networks anyway. So if, you, if you've got uh, Wi-Fi and you've got an English phone number, it's irrelevant because surely you'll just log on to the Wi-Fi and then you'll log on to Tinder, Badoo, Thai Friendly, whatever it is, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is you want to connect with. So do you need a Thai number? I'm not really sure. Certainly if you're going to 7-Elevens, uh, you'll have to register. They won't just hand you over a SIM card. You have to register it. If you go into to, uh, to Tukcom, which is on South Patea Road, there's thousands of uh, kiosks there, literally hundreds, well not thousands, but there's hundreds of kiosks there where they, they'll provide you with a SIM card. And I'm sure most of them will do a, you know, let's have one of them and they'll sort it out for you. So go to Tukcom. And in fairness, quite a lot of the, the uh, mobile phone shops in the city center are geared up to help you. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't really, if I'm being honest, if you're coming here for two weeks or a month, I don't really get the need for you to have a, a, a Thai phone. I, I just don't, don't get that. So unless you don't want to use your own phone and you want to keep your phone locked in the safe and you want to wander around, well then go to Tukcom. But DTAC, DTAC's probably the most popular for the tourist. I mean, maybe you guys disagree. If you've got a particular phone set up that you can recommend, again, please guys, you know, drop your comment below. What is your setup? What do you use? DTAC, AIS, do you use TrueMove? You know, what, what uh, um, SIM card do you guys use in order to communicate with whatever it is or whoever it is you want to communicate with? Uh, JR Fewtube 2013, Kolan. Now, I've got to say, if you come to Patea, go to Kolan, just even if it's for a day, because it is a nice place. Now, before you say, hang on, hang on, Trevor, like we've been to Tarwen Beach and it's rammed full of Bruce Lee's and all the rest of it, and it's really not good, it's just rammed, I agree. Absolutely agree. But if you get off the ferry and you go to the shops, the long row of shops at the back there, there is a road that leads out to TM Beach and to Samay Beach. Now, you can get a, a BART bus. It's like 20 BART, whatever it is. It's pennies or a motorbike taxi for like 60 BART. And they will take you to these beaches. And I have to say, they are an absolute, like, it's like black and white difference 
in terms of from Tarwan Beach to TM Beach and to Samay Beach. Those two beaches are stunning, absolutely stunning, and I would definitely recommend you going there, even if you go there on your own. Now to get there, you have to go to the pier, which is up by the Patea City sign, and you've got three ways of getting there. You've got the actual ferry, which is about 40 baht, I believe, last time I went. I can't remember off the top of my head, I think it's 40 baht. 30, it might be 30 baht. But there's the ferry. The ferry takes about 45 minutes and it will take you into Tarwin Beach. And uh, yeah, I mean, it can get so, so busy. Obviously not right now, but it can get very, very busy. And I would personally suggest go to that roadway and nip over to TM Beach or to Samay Beach. You can go on a speedboat. Now you've got two options with the speedboat. So you can either go in a shared speedboat where they will sit and wait and they will wait for them to get 10 to 12 passengers and each passenger will pay 300, 400 baht and it will take you over there. And they will come back and get you later on. So it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a decent journey to be fair. Or if there's a group of you, you can hire the speedboat yourself. And it costs about 3,000 baht. It used to be a little bit cheaper, but they started to put their prices up um, but it's about 3,000 baht, 3,500 baht, and that gets you the boat, and they will take you to whatever island, uh, whatever part of the beach you want to go to, and they will be at your beck and call. So you can say, right, when you take me there, when you're finished, I'll pick me up at one o'clock, take me there. Now, not too far away is Monkey Island, and I'll talk to you about Monkey Island in a second. Um, but the question was, what else do I need to bring? Bring your sun, sun cream because it gets hot and it's very, very sheltered. So it is hot. Cover yourself up, guys. You know, don't make those mistakes. There is a lot of food restaurants there. There's a lot of uh, the sun beds there that they will come and, and give you food, etc. So you don't really need to worry about food. <coughs> Excuse me. There's lots of things you can do on there. You know, you can jet ski and they're a lot safer than the jet skis on the uh, Patea Beach Road. You can go abseiling, paragliding, uh, you can do that motorized, uh, uh, what do they call it, kite, I don't know what you call it. It's, it's like a kite that flies out, it's got a motor on it, you sit in a chair, you can do all those kind of things if that's your game. Uh, you can go out deep sea um, swimming and, and snorkeling. And what I did with my son about, or oh, how old was Aiden then, Aiden must have been about eight or nine, we went down and walked on the sea, on the beach, uh, on the beach, on the seabed, feeding the fish, which was brilliant. They put this goldfish bowl over your head, push it down onto the onto the uh, to the to the um, seabed and they pump oxygen into it so obviously the water doesn't come in you could breathe and you walk around you're just looking around and you can feed the fish it's really quite cool and my, my boy did it when he was about eight he loved it he absolutely loved it quick point to note on that if you do do it don't do that i didn't realize but in diving terms that means get me up get me up rapido so of course the first time i've done it i'm looking at my boy and I'm like, you okay, son? And he's gone, I'm okay, dad. The, the instructor, fair play to the instructor though, he saw my boy do that and that was it. Bosh, gone, he was out. He literally, he was, he was gone. And I'm like, what are you doing? And the, and the guy looked at me and he went, little boy, this, go up. I'm like, oh, and then he, he pointed me, you want to go up? I'm like, yeah, take me up. So when I got up there, my boy was all upset and he was crying, dad, why they do that? I didn't do anything. I said, no, 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 no. I said, you're fine. I said, when they ask you, are you okay? You've got to do that. You can't do that, because that means get me out of here. And they did, but very, very good. I have to say credit where credit's due. They were lightning quick. If he was in any distress, they dealt with it like that. Bosh, see you later, son, you're gone. So uh, yeah, go and do those kind of things. Great fun. Monkey Island. Uh, yeah, be very careful, guys. You know, if you go to Monkey Island, the, the monkeys can be really aggressive. They, they often bite people. Um, they, they, they will swim out to you as well. They'll climb on the boats. You know, be very, very cautious. And if you do step onto the island, you don't think nothing of having two or three of them jumping all over you. They really are very, very forceful and very aggressive. So to be honest with you, me personally, I would suggest you swerve it, but you know, it's there if you want to go and do it. Uh, Jedney Blue and Dan B asked me, how easy is it to hire a motorbike here and how difficult is the motorbike license? So the first question, how easy is it to hire a motorbike here? Very easy, but don't give them your passport. Take a copy of your passport. Do not give them your actual passport. A copy is sufficient. That's all they need. They only need to see it. They don't need to keep your passport. So give them just a copy and you can hire a motorbike, a moped from like 1500 baht a week 
1500 baht a month if you live over here on the dark side you know a few hundred baht a day if that's your thing the license is it's embarrassing if you if you fail the license here which is up at regent school if you fail that dude you do not want to be riding on a bike so the motorbike test is very easy you go in you watch a mu uh, you watch a movie and guess what the movie's in thai and you can't speak thai so how do you know what they're going so you sit there for an hour and you're just like oh this is great and you know so if you can't speak thai you're not going to understand pretty much 95 percent of what the movie's about but anyway you've watched the movie then you've got to sit in this chair like I'm sat now and they've got this little machine opposite you and it's got two prongs. And they give you remote control and you've got to line the two prongs up so they're level rather than like a jointed. I mean, honestly, the guy stands here with a stick. He's got a big circle. He's got green, yellow, red, blue dots. And he points to different size dots. So you've got to go green, yellow, yellow, green, red, yellow, blue, green. Okay, very good. But the best bit is they got this pedal on the floor, okay? It's meant to be a brake. And they've got a box in front of you with these lights. And they go green, 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 red, red. And that's it. Honestly, I'm not joking. It goes green, 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 red, red. And when the first green goes, you've got to stop it before it gets to red. And I'll tell you how quick it goes. Remember this. Green, 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 red. So you've got, what, three seconds to press the pedal. And believe it or not, people fail. Can you believe that? They're like, oh, it's green, it's green, oh, it's green, oh, it's green, oh, it's gone red, oh, red. I mean, seriously, you shouldn't be on the road. And, you know, to be honest with you, if you're here on holiday, guys, I really, really strongly recommend you don't get a motorbike here because the problem that you've got, you might be a very, very accomplished rider back in the UK, but the problem is, or wherever you are, sorry, wherever you are in the world, in Europe, America, Australia, wherever, you might be a very, very uh, good rider, and you might have been riding bikes all your life, which is the biggest problem here. And I'll tell you why. It's because you just naturally, without thinking, expect other people on the road to behave how you are behaving. In other words, if there's a red light and you're gonna stop, you expect everyone else to stop. <laughs> no. If there's a left turn, you expect people to not undertake you. They will. If there's a, a road and you're going down the road facing the right way and you're driving with the flow of the traffic, you won't expect someone to come the opposite way, but they will. You know, it really is, it's just mental here. It really is mental. So I would suggest, unless you really desperately need to hire a motorbike, guys, just use the BART buses, use Bolt. Bolt is a brilliant app. I tell you about it all the time. Just keep yourself out of harm's reach. You know, if you want to nip around, use a motorbike taxi. But honestly, you, you've got to see it to believe it. And those guys that have been here a few times, you know, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It really is mental, mental. Okay, so what have we done? We've done the beer bars, we've done uh, Kolan, we've done that. What else have we got? Uh, oh, right, now this is a, a good one. Let's actually have a quick sip of my cup of tea. Here's a tip for you guys as well. If you're really hot like it is today, drink hot drinks. Hot tea cools your body down. Cold water makes you feel the heat more. Just let you know. Jeffrey R. Powell said, are there many hotels here that charge a joiner fee? Now, if you're not sure what a joiner fee is, a joiner fee is when you book into a hotel, i.e. Condial, which means on your own. So I'm booking into a hotel and suddenly, as if by magic, I've been out of an evening and somebody wants to come back and check out the TV with me. So they want to make sure that you pay a joiner fee in order to allow that person to come and check what channels are on your TV. But a majority of the hotels here, I'd say nearly all of the hotels here, do not charge a joiner fee. However, there are some that do. Now guys, I've got to be honest with you, I haven't had my dick out of my pants for five years since I've been with my missus. So I haven't been in the hotels to find these places. So I really honestly don't know. So I'm gonna throw myself open to you and say, guys, where do you know that does charge a joiner fee? Now I'm pretty certain that a lot of the higher end uh, hotels, the Dusitanis um, and places like uh, Siam at Siam, places like the Hilton, I believe they do charge a joiner fee because obviously they don't want the, a pretty woman uh, movie replication as, as she walks in, Julia Rubber walks in dressed like she did. Brilliant film, by the way. Um, so they do charge a joiner fee. 
don't really know why because it doesn't actually make any difference she's still going to walk in dressed like she's dressed in and, and to be fair to the girls they dress normal anyway it's not like they're going to be walking in in like a, a red sequin mini skirt with black leather high heels and uh, a crop top and all the rest of it well i mean i know i'm wishful thinking now but never mind but you know what i'm saying like they, they it's not like they're going hello look at me i'm a, i'm on the game yeah i don't know but anyway they charge a joiner fee but guys if you know of places that do charge joiner fees please drop the comment below because i've got not a igloo i don't know anywhere i think i think the hilton i think deuce it um cm at cm i really don't know truthfully so please help me out on that one guys because i'm sorry jeffrey i'm pretty poor at answering that question if i'm being honest okay uh two more to go oh sorry three more but this one's a very quick one dean dean said to me if he gets two girls to uh give him a bj does that count as a threesome <laughs> i mean what <laughs> well no in my eyes you know that kind of thing that kind of activity is in a in a bedroom with you know a lot of that going on i guess don't know but anyway mate that's uh i would say that counts as a as a good entertainment but not quite the threesome you may be trying to tick off your your list as to do's um all right now war for you said I mentioned the other day, uh, uh, sorry, you mentioned the other day about the problem you have here is with other foreigners. Why is that? All right, so let me just tell you straight now. The biggest problems you've got here are people that live here that can't afford to live here. And they will prey on you, and you're going to think this is mental when I say this, but listen, let me tell you, it's true. They will tell you sob stories, they will lie to you, they will tell you all kinds of, oh, oh man, I forgot my wallet, mate. I've, I've, you couldn't lend me a couple of thousand, but I'll be back in tomorrow. Yeah, of course you will, mate. Yeah, and I won't come in your face. You know, all those kind of things that are, that are gonna spill at you. And you really have got to have your wits about you because there's many people out here that will befriend you. And let me just say, there's a lot of decent people out here, but there's also a lot of people that will try and to help you relieve you of your money. And guys, just don't do it. You know, no matter how bad the sob story is, no matter what the line is, you know, just leave it alone. And I fell foul to this myself, you know, there's a, there's a well-known photographer who absolutely shafted me. You know, he was on his ass, he was depressed, he was in bits and pieces, he was crying, oh, I can't do this, I've got no income, I've got nothing. And we got him up, we got him running, we got him doing some photos, etc., etc., etc. And then to thank me, he went around all the bars I work in where he knew and tried to take work off me. Cheers for that, mate. Thanks very much. The other one I had, which was an even better one, was a guy burst into tears in Starbucks in the Avenue Mall. Told me he's got a, he's got two kids, his missus, he's got a, not a pot to piss in, he's got no money, he's absolutely destitute. Can I help him out with his business and invest in it? And he'd give me some money. In the end, I said, you know what, mate? No, I won't. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll buy I'll buy half of your business because I liked it, and uh, we'll 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 do it. And we did, and we were doing really really well. I got him a shed load of work, shed load of orders, everything was good. And then he stabbed me straight between the eyes, literally straight between the eyes, disappeared off the face of the earth. I'm going around his house knocking, everything's gone. Didn't hear him. About a year later, I'm at another uh, a, a festival kind of thing, and there was a, a stall selling exactly what we used to sell, different guy. I'm chatting away to this guy, and he said, oh yeah, such and such, you'll be back in a minute. For that name rings a bell. And lo and behold, he walked up, and I'm like, well, 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 hello, how are you? Long time no see, and he went, Oh, I've got nothing to say. I said, no, maybe you haven't, but I have. And anyway, you know, it wasn't the right time or the right place. And a year later, believe it or not, he disappeared again. A year later, I bumped into him in a, uh, in a gentleman's club on the dark side. And, you know, I was wrong. I chinned him. I shouldn't have chinned him, but I did. And I got fined 20,000 baht and threatened to be kicked out of the country because I assaulted him as opposed to going to the police with no written contract, with no no evidence, nothing other than just say, well, look, he's mugged me off, mate. So anyway, the point being, guys, is stay away. Just keep clear. You know, all the sob stories in the world, it's irrelevant. Just keep clear, stay away, and just enjoy your holiday for what it is. Mix with other like-minded people that are here on holiday having a good time, or keep yourself to yourself. You know, you're never gonna be lonely in this city. There's always people around every single corner. So, you know, please, please, stay well away because there are people out here that will tell you all kinds of un unimaginable stories in order to try and get you 
to financially help them out. And trust me, they will take on that hand and you ain't gonna see them again. So just be warned guys. That's why I say to you, stay away. I'd, I, don't, I can count on this hand how many people here that I socialize with, literally, this hand. And that's not because I'm a recluse or anything like that. I love going out and seeing people and meeting people. I'm a nice, friendly kind of person, but I don't socialize with people because they really are out to get you and it's just not worth the aggravation. The problem you've got here as well is you're the Falang, I'm a Falang, they don't care, the old Bill, they're like, yeah, whatever, boys, just sort it out, not interested. But then if you do sort it out like I sorted the last one out, then they are interested because they want some of that. You know what I mean? Crazy. All right, so that's that one. Uh, last question. Now, last question, and I've left this one to last deliberately because I haven't got a clue, to be honest with you. Um, Stevie R says, what is the future of Buzzing Patea? Where do you see yourself in a year's time? Oh, mate, what a great question. So... Six months ago, I would have never imagined we are where we are now. I am absolutely blown away by not just the, the subscribers. I mean, I've got, what, 22,500, I think now, something close to that. Um, not because of that. I mean, don't get me wrong. It is, it's incredible, and I'm absolutely blown away and flattered that people want to subscribe to the channel. I'm getting recognized. You know, I walk around the town, and people say, oh, hi, Buzzing, how you doing, mate? I'm like, well, hello, mate, how are you, you know? I get people come out and say, oh, thanks very much. I've got someone that connected with me because they've seen you talk about me on, on Buzzing. And all this. It's been an, just in, incredible, really. And now we're going to launch our merchandise. Um, we're, in the, we're in the proceeds of building the site, the, the merchandise shop area, which will have shirts, caps, masks, uh, cups, loads and loads of different stuff. And not just Buzzing stuff, but we've, uh, we've gone into doing some off-the-wall kind of T-shirts that... You guys will know what it means, but maybe other people won't. So it's safe to wear when you go back home. Um, for example, I've got one which we've done, which is really nice. It's a big, funky, big letter six. Now, no one knows what that means back in England, but you do. You know, oh yeah, soy six. So we've got loads of little things going on. So that's, that's been amazing, and I can't wait to get that up and running. And that will definitely be uh, by the end of this month. That's in a, in a go-to position. There's been a discussion about a buzzing cafe and a buzzing bar. Now, I've had a lot of interest from people that have been mailing me and messaging me saying, look, you know, I'm really interested and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I've got one guy, um, I won't mention his name, but I got your email, my friend. Uh, we've known each other a long time and I'm 100% very, very interested in talking to you when you get over here, which will be soon. So there is a strong likelihood that yes, there will be a buzzing bar. Yes, there will be a buzzing cafe. Um, so again, you know, never in a million years did I imagine that this would happen, but it is. And where will I see the channel in a year's time? Truthfully, I've got no idea. I really, really don't, because I didn't expect this. So I would like to think that it will carry on exactly as it is. I'm still gonna go out and interview people. I'm still gonna go out and do the walkabouts. I'm, I can't wait for things to reopen so I can go off and show you lots of other different things apart from walking around Walking Street and LK Metro and Tree Town and you know, Soibaka, the things you've seen a hundred times. Or I wanna go and show you like a, a, the train trip up to Bangkok and, and some places in Bangkok because maybe you've never been out on a night out in Bangkok and I wanna show you stuff like that. I wanna take you up to Rayong. I want to take you down to Satahib and these places where there's other stuff going on that maybe you just don't know about. So yes, Buzzing will continue to do that. There's no doubt about that. Um, I probably guess maybe by then we'll have the bar or we'll have a cafe, one or the other, or maybe both, I don't know. Um, there will be the merchandise out there. I am tinkering around with the idea of possibly maybe a Buzzing lifestyle, uh, newspaper style kind of thing that I used to have in the past. Uh, because that worked really well, um, but that's, you know, I need someone to come in and uh, do all the marketing and, and uh, go out and see bars and stuff and that, so that's, you know, I don't have time for that, so there's that. We have the buzzing radio, there's a, the buzzing radio has been going a long, long time, it's always just been sat out of the back there. Um, Brooks, he's a, a guy that takes care of that, he's a brilliant guy, sadly he's a Leeds fan, but never mind, we can't all have it our own way. Um, I know you're watching. Um, but you know, he's a great guy and the radio's there. It's, it's a good online radio. We've got an app, so you can just put it on your phone and just listen to what's going on. And that needs uh, a lot more developing, a lot more pushing. And who knows, you know, maybe there will be the opportunity to bring back, I used to have a TV channel uh, on Sofon back in the day. So 
I don't know, you know, right now I have to keep pinching myself to make sure that what is happening today is actually happening and that it's real. But where will we go with buzzing? Guys, I've got no idea. All I can say is, you know, with your support, your following, the interaction I get, it really is incredible. It's just unbelievable. I'm blown away by it. I'm completely humbled by it because I can't imagine why that people want to follow me, but they do. And I'm, I'm so grateful because it, it's, it's, been, it's been a brilliant journey and, you know, long will it continue. So there you go. I don't really know otherwise. So that's about it today, guys. So uh, what I will say is don't forget uh, tomorrow at 5 a.m. is the live stream, which will connect for those of you that don't find the 5 p.m. one on Sunday uh, compatible with your time. So tomorrow, 5 a.m., Friday is part two of Nick the Headhunter Chapman. He's a great guy, you know, maybe the first thumbnail put you off watching it because it's him covered in blood, he's a fighter, etc. But he's an absolutely lovely guy. He's a completely different person to when you look at him and think, bloody hell, he's a, he's a scary dude. But he's not, he's a lovely oh, little penis. Um, he's a lovely guy, he really is, and, he, and he's got some really good tales to tell you, and uh, yeah, very, very committed man to his businesses. So have a watch of that, that's on Friday. Uh, Saturday, we're gonna have a walk and about, I'm probably gonna have a, a wander around in Jom Tien, somewhere like that, and Sunday, Sunday at 5 p.m. Bangkok time uh, will be our, our uh, ever popular chat live stream, which has been brilliant, love it. Um, what I will say, guys, if there's any questions you'd like me to answer, either email me 247pataya at gmail.com. There is a link down below in the description. Send me up your, uh, your discussion that you would like me to cover, and by all means, I will do my very best to, uh, to cover that for you. And uh, that's about it coming up for this week. And for those of you that keep sending me emails, this is for you. Pataya, 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 Pataya. There you go. Hopefully one of those has pleased you. I get guys sending me a message again. Can't believe you didn't say Pataya correct. I'm like, oh, dude, get over yourself. Does it matter? Really? Does it really matter? Anyway, that's enough for me. I've been waffling on for too long now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, guys, please remember hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon if you'd like to be notified when I bring out a new video. Please join our members area. There's more and more members joining each and every week. And once the place is here reopen, I am out there every day talking to people and saying, look, if I put someone through your door with a, with a buzzing member digital ID card because they subscribe to the channel, not subscribe, sorry, they support the channel, they're, they're a paying member, and they show you their ID card, can you give them a discount? And there's some, already we've had some great responses, you know, bars are giving like 10% off your bin, stuff like that. So it's, it's worthwhile and it will easily cover the cost of your membership. And lastly, join our Telegram group. There's so many people on there, like-minded people just like you that have got a love for this wonderful city, Pattaya. There you go. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please, wherever you are in the world, stay safe.